From the medicine cabinet to the garage, a number of harmful substances can be found in our home, all of which can be dangerous to our children if ingested. Hi, I'm Veronica with WatchMojo.com, and today we're speaking with Dr. Dominic Chalut, Doctor of Emergency Medicine and Toxicologist at the Montreal Children's Hospital, about these harmful situations and what we can do to avoid them. What is the most common source of poisoning that you see in the emergency room? Material or product we have at home. So it could be pharmaceuticals, could be uh, you know, cleaning agents, uh, all the different products that we store at home, kids in their expiratory phases will tend to grab them and sometimes they'll put it in their mouth. Now, is there a particular time in a child's life when this is most common? I will say preschoolers are especially prone to, let's say, put things in their mouth and uh, present to the emergency with possible intoxication. During school age, they're more kind of, they know the risk, either they've been told by their parents or they learn about it, and so usually it's more of a, it's less frequent. As a parent, what can you do to avoid any situations where a child can harm themselves? I think first of all, we need to keep all pharmaceutical in boxes which are child-proof. Um, also, all the other potential toxic substances that you store underneath your sink, in your garage, or in your shed, should be out of reach from the children. And eventually, when they're old enough, you know, you need to teach them exactly the risk of certain substances. And I think one last thing is that, is that if you no longer need those products, please dispose of them safely. What are some symptoms that we can look for if we do think that our child has ingested some poison? I'll say the f most common occurrence is the kid has almost no symptoms, or you may have some abdominal pain. Uh, vomiting, you may have a bit of diarrhea. I will say the best thing is, first of all, call the uh, Quebec Poison Center. They can be reached at 811. Try to have the bottle or the container in your hand, so if when you speak to the poison specialist, you'll be able to identify the substance and tell them exactly what was ingested. Don't make the kid throw up. Used to, we used to say that the first thing to do is to produce emesis or vomiting. Nowadays, we s tend to say don't induce vomiting at all and just wait for the poison center. They will give you clear instruction in a sense you may be observing the kid at home, you may be requested to show up in the emergency, so they will be able to provide you with clear instructions. As children grow older and are teenagers, they start to experience with other substances. Can you tell us more about these situations? Teenagers are also exposed to, I'll say, street drugs or all those uh, drugs available. They're no longer kind of uh, exploring, but often they're experiencing. And fortunately for some of them, it will become, let's say, um, you know, a habit or they will become dependent on the use of those substances. Teenagers, we have to be more careful because they tend to overdose more seriously. If they do, it's not necessarily accidental, it could be intent intentional. And the way we approach this type of problem is completely different than from preschooler. As a parent, what's the best way to address the situation with your teen? I think the best thing is always to have an open discussion with your teen, not just regarding that, but regarding everything. Um, try not to judge him or her. Uh, try to remain calm. Um, try to understand his point or her point of view and always support your teen. Well, thank you very much. This is very helpful. Thank you. Pleasure.